Today we're going to talk about low light with the Canon EOS C70 and why so many people are getting it wrong. What's up everybody, James Jackson here, back again with another video. If you're new to my channel, I do tips, tricks, news, and reviews for the film and video making industry. So if you do like the content here, please hit that subscribe button, hit the likes. The likes definitely help the channel out and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth. So I recently was able to go shoot a uh, nightlife party uh, event for one of a good friend of mine's whose birthday was happening and I wanted to sort of kind of test the low light but I wasn't I'll be honestly wasn't sure about the low light because I've heard so many different things about it. it's very noisy and it's it's it doesn't seem to really do well at high ISOs and I wanted to shoot 4k 60 and 4k 120 so I wasn't really sure what I was going to get myself into uh, but of course, upon getting the camera, the C70, which I've been loving since I've got it, I have uh, decided to try do some tests, and I came across a couple things before shooting this event that really made me sort of understand that a lot of people don't really un seem to understand about, one, they don't really understand about gamma and log curves, and also understanding dynamic range and how it's actually, and utilizing it properly. Because what's the thing that everybody seems to do with all these low lights? I've always seen is C log two, and all of and the thing that everybody says it's very noisy. Like once you get to ten thousand ISO, it's for some people it does it's not usable. Well, for one thing, when people are saying this, I kind of question. But we're gonna hold off and get to that first. I wanted to show you guys just a quick little clip of this event. I want to show it to you guys so you guys can check it out. So here's the clip and then we'll get back to talking.
So let me ask you guys, what do you guys thought of that clip? Personally, I thought the images outside of a few were pretty much like nice, on point, great looking images. Yes, there's noise, but it's nowhere near as bad as many people are talking about. First of all, let's talk about thing. I did not shoot this event in Canon Log 2. I shot it in Canon Log 3. Now, why would I shoot Canon Log 3 when it has less dynamic range compared to Canon Log 2? And the answer is very simple. I don't need the dynamic range of Canon Log 2. And this is the part that people don't seem to really understand about gamma curves, especially with log. And that is the fact that, look, when especially with a gamma curve like Canon Log 2, it's raising the shadows, it's raising deep into the shadows, but by doing so, it's increasing the noise that you are putting to the image. Now, if you're in a, a moderately lit scenario or you have a super contrasty scenario where there's a lot of shadows and a lot of light, then yes, C-Log2 makes the most sense. You want to maximize that dynamic range. But people, you're not using 16 plus stops of dynamic range at night. At best, you're probably shooting like six, maybe seven stops. So if that is the case, why are you purposely working with a log curve that introduces noise to the image instead of working with something like Canalog 3 yes it uh, it removes about two stops in the shadows it gives you about 14 stops but that's still plenty of latitude to play with you know barring like a couple shots where like lights were like literally right in front of the camera and hitting the lens I, I i wasn't going to i didn't even use majority of the dynamic range of Canalog 3. And honestly, you could have used YDR for this situation and you probably would even get even cleaner image because you're not worrying about the log curve like reaching into the shadows and introducing noise. That's how log curves work. So what I was doing was I was shooting in Canon Log 3. Now I did apply some noise reduction, but it was like very minor. I was using DaVinci Resolve's noise reduction, which by the way, it is an amazing noise reduction application. And even with the noise reduction, I could still play back after like the rendering, I can play back the footage, no problem whatsoever. And I only had to maybe make like a plus three on the noise reduction performance and when it's set to better and pretty much a lot of the noise was gone now most there was still some there but it looked like film grain and i'm personally okay with film grain because it adds it adds texture it adds depth to the image it doesn't look digital it doesn't uh, it doesn't pre uh, create you know, that digital noise look that other cameras produce. And that's one of the things I love about this DGO sensor is the fact that not only it has pretty solid noise performance, it also keeps a lot of the colors. It's great at color retention, which is one of my big gripes for a lot of cameras, especially the Sony cameras. Now, I'm not speaking on the A7S III because I haven't tried that, but every Sony camera that I've tried, including the A7S II and all these other cameras, like the a7s2 great noise reduction it was and it looked clean even though it was applying serious noise reduction it looked clean at higher isos but the problem was is that if especially if you were not working with professional lighting like you would be in a nightclub it would introduce so much desaturation and you would add so much green to the image that it was the work was far less than what it was worth especially since the a7s2 at the time was only an 8-bit codec now again the a7s2 and some of the newer cameras may be different but that was some of my biggest gripe. it's also was my big gripe with the gh5 s which was that yeah it was you was really good at low light but it was applying so much noise reduction and it wasn't retaining the colors as clean as some other cameras have like the pocket cinema cameras, which is why I love the pocket cinema cameras. Even though they they don't do as good a noise performance, 
they retain so much color information that I'm okay with that because the details in those images, you can just use some noise reduction and get rid of a lot of that noise. Now, there is only one scenario, a couple scenarios that this was not the case. And it was whenever I filmed 120 frames per second, you probably saw like the girl with the bottle, the bottle girl, as well as the guy with the hookah. There was a lot of noise in those images. And that's because those were at 120 frames per second. And keep in mind, DGO is not active once you go beyond 60 frames per second on the C70. So with DGO deactivated, a lot of the, combined with the fact that it was 120 frames per second in underlit scenarios, and so I was shooting, had to pump up the ISO even more at to like 12,800. Yeah, the noise was very noticeable in those images. So, in terms of low light, I probably will not be shoot a lot of um, 120 frames per second uh, outside, in case of scenarios where I am not controlling or where I can't light it properly. I probably am not going to use 120 frames per second, which still gives a, a reason for the R5 because the R5 is full frame, even though it's using pixel bin, it's pretty clean at 120 frames per second from my experience with the R5. So in those situations, I probably will just use the R5 for 4K 120 frames per second. Now this will probably change once we get to like light situ places where if there's a lot of light, C70 may take that. But outside of that, this is what I just want to prove to your point. It's like, guys, don't just shoot the widest dynamic range log curve just because it's there. You don't need to use it in every single scenario. If the dynamic range isn't so high contrast, don't be adding more noise to the image if you don't need to. You can shoot with just simple YDR, which is, has an amazing dynamic range on this camera, especially with the DGO technology. I, would I personally would use that but if you wanted to use some log where you wanted to give yourself a little bit more uh, flex, I guess flexibility with color grading, then S uh, Canalog 3 is more than enough for those situations. But don't you don't have to, but please don't use Canalog 2 all the time. Again, ass assess your scenes and see what is necessary. If you don't need 16 stops of dynamic range, which quite honestly, there isn't a lot of scenarios where you will need that amount of dynamic range. If you don't need it, then don't use Canalog 2. It's a great profile. It gives a lovely flat image, but it also is, if you're not careful, can produce a lot of noise, which is one of the big downsides of it. So just tip and point, if you're gonna shoot low light with the C70, then shoot in Canalog 3, the least if you're going to use log or use YDR. YDR is an amazing coda and I'm going to talk more about that. But yes, if all these people out here who've been saying, oh, the low light is noisy, and I know a couple of them because I've spoken to them personally, understand, it's only noisy if you're just using the, the, the widest, get, uh, widest dynamic range log curve, which is kind of log two. If you're not doing that, then it's actually really good at performing in low light scenarios. You just, again, know the camera, learn the camera, and you will be able to do a lot of things. That's it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Again, make sure to hit a like and leave your comments below. Let me know what you thought of the footages. Let me know what you thought about, or about you know, working with different logs in different scenarios. If you have questions about me of when to use certain log curves, let me know, leave a comment below, and until next time, take care everyone.